Good morning, everyone. My name is Brett Raz. Again, I work with the Economic Development Office. I'm the planning manager. Thank you for coming this morning. There's only a couple of new faces that haven't been at one of the meetings over the last couple of days in this kind of the first broader public effort to take a look at the Dixie Heritage Corridor in Groveland and uh, Holly Township. Just a brief, uh, brief update, we brought Dan Marriott. Dan is a Heritage Road consultant from Washington, D.C., who's worked all over the United States and even in other, other countries, who works specifically with historic road corridors, very much like Dixie Highway. And we're at the very beginning phases, a stage of engaging Groveland Township, Holly Township, the Michigan Department of Natural Resources, Oakland County Parks and Rec, and the business and property owners on Dixie Highway to look at a, uh, take a collective comprehensive look at the corridor to see how important assets can be preserved and how development can occur in a sensitive way that maintains the, uh, the character of the, of the road corridor. With that brief introduction, I'm gonna turn it over to Dan. Dan's gonna summarize his observations over the last couple of days, and, and do you wanna take questions during your talk, Dan, or how do you, uh, how do you wanna handle Let's it? See how, the how it goes, how it goes? And you're gonna be marking on the map, right? All okay, all right, here we go, Dan Marriott. First of all, uh, thank you all so very much for having me here. It's been a real pleasure uh, these, these past few hours uh, in, in Oakland County. And I've seen a lot and learned a lot, and I'm not at all gonna pretend that I'm an expert uh, because you are always the experts at the local level. But I can bring you some insights uh, from my work around the country uh, and around other countries as well, looking at corridors like this and looking at the, the difficult but potential intersections of economic development with resource management, uh, tourism versus local values and needs, um, community identity versus large and regional structure, and how does that all come together and fit in? And I think with the Dixie Highway, you have a really extraordinary resource here to kind of organize all of this. And uh, what I'd like to do is kind of walk through some thoughts. These are some of my ideas. I've been chatting with the planning office. And uh, just to give you some insights, this is all intended to get you thinking. And I want you to think very broadly and positively as well. Um, I don't want you to worry about right now about budgets and whether people want to approve it or not. I want you to think right now about would you like to see this? Because if you want to see something, you can figure out how to make it work if you can. Um, so I want to kind of take that type of approach this morning and thinking about not just what happens next month, but next year, five years from now, and 20 years from now. Because the planning process is something that is always evolving and changing. Uh, and you may work really hard right now and be excited that the new ORV park is going to be opening up. Um, and you have expectations of what that will mean. But as that evolves and grows and shifts, the expectations you have may start shifting as well. And that might mean revisiting this process again at another point to rethink, okay, what happens next? Any successful community in the United States or around the world that's good and desirable and interesting is always revisiting their planning process. So this is the first stage of an ongoing process because we can never plan and anticipate everything that may or may not happen. Uh, so, and you always often have some unexpected benefits over time that you're just gonna learn about as, as you move forward with all this. The first thing that I, I became aware of, again, 45 hours ago, uh, was that uh, I kept hearing a lot about the ORV park. And I thought this was gonna be a big ORV destination. Uh, and as I started wandering and getting off the Dixie Highway and traveling and learning and meeting with people, this is a really complex area that has a lot of really rich existing recreation resources right now. Uh, state recreation lands, county camping, skiing, Renaissance Festival. Um, people are boarding horses up here. Uh, I'm hearing about people biking through Holly Village. Um, there's lots of, re this area is already a, a regional destination for recreation. Um, but for me, as a first-time visitor driving up on the Dixie Highway, it really wasn't that obvious to me. There were very few clues uh, in terms of what it was and, and what it could potentially be. As I started getting shown everything by local people, I started learning, learning more and more about it. What I like too is, which is really, really good in terms of economic development through tourism and, and investment, uh, is the diversity of the resources you offer here. Um, I'm going to tell you right now, I'm not an ORV guy. So you're not going to draw me here because of the ORV park. You'll draw lots of other people because of that. But I'm first in line for, what's the name of the cabin at the state park, Sean? Uh, Wild Horse, we're also in 
Ralston Cabin. As soon as that's redone and reopened, I'm first in there, okay? <laughs> um, and I will come up here and I will hang out and I'm having dinner and lunch in Holly uh, because that's how I like to travel. I'm a city boy. I want to be in the quiet and see the stars. There's a market for me. Um, there's a market for people who bike. There's a market for people for the Renaissance Festival. And I think right now, the ORV Park is a new addition to a very complex and very nuanced recreation resource up here. And I think the key is to figure out how that fits into this and complements everything. It shouldn't be driving the whole process here. It should be the newest, best addition that you have coming into a very sophisticated structure already. Even the fact you're camping, the uh, Groveland Oaks, is that right? Yeah, I'm trying to remember all my names. Uh, Groveland Oaks and the state recreation area are completely different camping facilities. Um, and I know from talking to people at both facilities now, people really like one or the other based on their family, their desires, their interests in what they're doing. It's a really good resource. It's not like you offer one type of camping where the kids are bored or one type of camping where I'm feeling overprogrammed. Um, I can go with the campground I want to go to and stay in your cabin. You've got to promise me that's going to be ready for me. Um, so we've got, you've got all these resources. Um, I don't ski because I'm afraid of heights, <laughs> but there's other people that are going to come here and do that. Um, so I encourage you, when you start looking at a map of the region up here and you look at, the, look at all the green space, just don't look at the county land, just don't look at the private reserves like Tamarack, just don't look at state lands, look at all the green spaces. Um, and see, it's all connected. It's really a remarkable resource that you have right up here. Um, and this becomes a real benefit for these communities over time. Now, one thing that I've heard consistently while I've been here over the past few days is people keep telling me, we don't want big box stores, we like the rural character, we like the green landscape that we drive through in this area. Is that a correct? Anybody want a big Walmart up here that I'm missing? Okay, so no Walmart Supercenter. Uh, this is important. I'm hearing people saying this is what we like, this is what we value, but I'm also hearing and seeing little things that can start chipping away at that as well. So if you have a community vision, it's very hard to kind of define that and, and work very hard to make sure that your planning processes and your forward development work with that. I think many of you were at my talk the first night about how you can accommodate development and change an environment and be thinking about that very, very carefully. And again, I will remind you all, as I did the other night, and it's becoming even increasingly clear to me, you have a resource here. You have value here. You have a community expectation for a quality of the environment, the landscape, and your communities. Um, you need to be very specific about what you want to see and what you don't want to see, um, and how you would like to see things implemented here over time. People will listen to you. Um, there's an opportunity for development here. There's an opportunity to make money off of the resources that exist here, um, and people will come. And they'll come and do what they want, or they'll come and they'll do what you're asking them to do uh, because they want to be here. And they're not going to go away if you ask them for a better setback, better architecture, or more trees in the parking lot. Uh, trust me, because there's a reason to be here, um, and that's just basic economics, which puts you in the front seat in terms of how things get developed over time. So I really want to encourage you to think about that very closely. One thing that uh, I think was an overarching thought of mine with all this, there's a need for better connectivity. Um, uh, agencies seem to be talking together, but there's also needs for physical connections uh, as well. And I think uh, when I was in um, Holly yesterday, uh, I thought you know, if I were staying, again, in my, we just start calling it Dan's cabin. If I'm staying in Dan's cabin, all right? Um, you probably need a big grant from me to be able to make that change, right? Uh, <laughs> yeah, so uh, if I'm staying in my cabin, um, I love walking, I love hiking. I don't think twice about walking 18 or 20 miles a day. Um, I would not think twice about walking to Holly for my dinner from that cabin, um, but I really can't do that right now because there's really no easy way for me to walk there. Um, I could bike, but I'm gonna be sharing the road with other people as well. So I think looking at a, a larger connectivity with all these resources is very valuable. I'm also hearing as well, uh, in terms of other connectivity, is the, the potential and, and the need for some equestrian trails. There's a lot of horses being boarded up here, but the opportunity for people to go uh, around and moving, uh, it doesn't really exist right now. So how does that work? There, I know there's policies and regulations in different lands in terms of what types of access are available. Um, that can all be figured out at some point, the thing is to identify the need right now. One thing I think is very critical, especially with the new, um, 
now I'll see where we are. Okay, so ORV is right here. We have state lands and we have bike, bike trails over here as well. It seems to me that there's another real great active recreation area right here uh, in state lands. Um, and again, the connectivity. So I think a major thing long range is looking at some type of pedestrian bridge over Interstate 75. Um, is this also a pedestrian bridge for, for horse trails as well? I mean, we should be thinking about all these things right now. But think about this. Again, if people are coming here to get away from the suburbs, away from the city, away from wherever, um, I don't want to have to interact with as much infrastructure, urban infrastructure as possible. Um, so I guess I could go down here and kind of have an unpleasant walk to Holly, which means I'm probably not going to do it, or there might be a way for me to kind of wander through and weave and get there through a nice pedestrian crossing over Interstate 75. Uh, so be thinking about that. Um, we also have um, opportunities here with the buffer areas around this. Um, and I've seen the master plan as well. Thank you, John, for bringing that in last night. Uh, there's lots of opportunities here. You know, having some type of a green link going through here uh, so that people who aren't ORV uh, can have a sense of some of the tranquility of these spaces to get the tranquility over here. And Jessica from DNR yesterday was actually talking about the idea if we had a, a green link through ORV, having some type of an overlook view so the people who aren't, aren't ORV people might actually be, I can tell you if I'm walking by, I'm gonna be curious what's going on down in that pit. Uh, so provide a place for people to look. People I've been talking to have been talking about points of aha, where people have come up here. And who, um, your biologist, the wildlife woman yesterday, Julie, Julie, Julie yeah. yeah, was talking about a guy from the power company who actually held an endangered bird, and it completely changed his view of wildlife, landscape, parks, and recreation. And um, I think there's those opportunities for these synergies in a region like this. Um, maybe I can become an ORV guy if I just get exposed to it a little bit by wandering by. Um, maybe someone might become more interested in horseback riding. Maybe someone who is here for the, the, the water park and the lake suddenly finds they have an interest in, in birds and wildlife. So these are introductions. We all know, and these are really strong statistics right now, um, attendance at, at, at parks and green space and open space is really going down in this country. Kids are all wired on their devices. Um, there's a need for people to re-engage with the landscape. Um, so all these different types of things provide different entrees into this experience. If you're coming for the aqua park, if you're coming for ORB, that could be the, the hook, the link to a different view of the environment and the landscape in the region. And doing everything you can to make this a destination, it is a destination, but a really strong destination. I think it's really, really good. Coffee or water right now? Okay, water. So we have Springfield, we have Groveland, we have Holly. Um, each jurisdiction brings different things. And I would encourage you to think of yourselves collectively as a region um, and not saying, well, we wish we had this, we wish we had that. Let's see what's happened. When I was here the first day, I thought, this is great, but where do I go as a city boy and have a nice kind of pleasant dinner? Well, that was solved yesterday in Holly when I thought, what's what, four miles away? Right. Yeah. The resource is there. Um, that provides another resource for a different type of, 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 of a visitor. And again, like I'm saying, you, you offer this incredibly complex and nuanced diversity of resources here, which makes you an ideal family destination. You know, um, one part of the family wants to go RV, one other part of the family wants to go antiquing. You know, it can all happen here in proximity and ideally with some better linkages um, on a very, really great green infrastructure system that ties everything together by bike, by horseback, on foot. Uh, and that's really valuable. So, this is a very important scribbles from the last two days, just so you know. The Dixie Highway. Okay, this is the spine. As I mentioned the other night, this is the great historic highway from Michigan all the way to Florida. Uh, you're a part of it. Uh, you can claim a relationship all the way down through Tennessee, down through Georgia, down to Florida. You're all intimately tied to this, um, just like they are to you. Um, 
historic roads, long distance corridors are increasingly becoming quarters which people are traveling and touring because they find them fascinating. Route 66 is the, the great one that everyone knows and it brings a lot of money into those six states out there. Um, the six historic states of the National Road have really ramped that up from Maryland to Illinois uh, and people are traveling the old National Road now as well. The reason I bring this up is these long distance corridors, so Dixie Highway is 1914, all right? The area up here with the, the trees, the green, the woodland, it gives you a sense of what it might have been like in 1914. Um, as you head down closer and down in southern Oakland County, et cetera, I have no sense of 1914. It's, it's a large, you know, uh, suburban area. Um, it doesn't matter. Uh, it's all part of this connectivity, and people don't expect it to be a specific experience. People like the connectivity idea. You know, this, I can wander over here, I can stand on a road, and I can know I can follow this all the way down, down to Florida. Uh, which brings up some points about the Dixie Highway as an organizing thread for all of this. You have an area up here along the Dixie Highway which gives a sense of the magic and the travel and the experience of an older time, which is kind of nice. Um, Springfield Township has done a really good job with their planning and their design policies. It's not 1914 there, but it's actually, it's a pleasant commercial area. Setbacks, signage, and things like that. That's what's really important on these long distance corridors is that the corridor be, have enough historic, history to be legitimate, um, and parts that aren't dripping with history are pleasant. Um, having nice signs, having nice setbacks, uh, and Springfield Township provides a lot of resources just right down the road as well. Um, Springfield Township also, there's, a, there's a, a, a transition point here in terms of feeling like you're part of the metro area and feeling like you're kind of heading up north all of a sudden. And to me, that's right at, uh, I just looked this up because I can learn all my names today. Uh, Dixie Lake, everyone knows where Dixie Lake is? Okay, it's between uh, Davisburg Road and Rattley Road uh, where you have the water coming right up to the edge. Um, what I find interesting is uh, there's so much water up here all over the place, but for someone from outside passing through, I don't see it that often. Uh, you really have to get off the beaten track and kind of go exploring to actually discover all these beautiful little lakes and ponds that dot this whole region. Um, that to me is an opportunity on the Dixie Highway where you actually have water kind of immediately at present to the road. And I think that's a real important first gateway to this region because the water is there, and it tends to become more rural and less dense after you pass that place as well. Now, drive by there today after the meeting and take a look. Um, the utility lines are really low right down. They're kind of blocking your view, and a little bit of selective clearing with some of the vegetation would provide some nice views out to that. Um, I would suggest that's a good first gateway, and I would think about the idea of undergrounding the utilities just at that spot. Um, and that would, that's going to completely change this perception of the relationship of water to this area. Um, and that just, with, even without a sign of anything, it's like, wow, this is cool, this is really great. When we, I had dinner in Clarkston last night, uh, and the, the mill pond there is, it's great. It's right up along the edge of the road, and it's open, and it's beautiful, and you see that. Dixie Lake is the same thing. It's just that this clutter that's kind of impeding your, your visual access to that. Um, removing some of that clutter, underground the utilities. Don't have to do this next week. I know it costs money. You don't have to do the whole corridor. That little tiny bit right there, pop them down, let them pop them on the other side, and you've got a really great view corridor there for relatively low, low impact cost. Uh, then as you move up toward the state park, there's a potential opportunity here for a pull-off. Um, again, how it's built, how large it is, what it's accommodating, figure that. But think of this as you have that first introduction at Dixie Lake. It's becoming greener and lower dense. You come up here, and there's actually, you, you can miss this passing by. There's a possibility here to pause, get a glimpse into the state park, more water, water, water. I'm getting a sense that there's stuff up here all of a sudden now. Um, and this can be a place for some interpretation as well. What's up ahead? Well, we've got camping, we've got ORV, we've got a Renaissance festival. This is a kind of a good gateway to capture people right before they get into the intense area that we have right here. Um, these are kind of visual things. Uh, and then the other thing which I think is really important for you to all think about, and I would encourage you to do everything you can to make this work. What's the name of the facility here? Is it Blakely? Blakely? Blakely Building. 
Blakely Building. Um, I would call in every favor you ask in the state um, and find out some way to acquire this um, as a, an interpretation visitor resource center for this region. Uh, this could be shared by multiple agencies, county, if you have a Dixie Highway Association at some point, um, DNR, this can be a really, really good kind of capture point. It's, it looks like it was built as a park building. It's adjacent to county and state parkland. I mean, it's kind of a real obvious, like it's, it's ready for you, it's waiting, it's sitting there. Um, I think it would be a huge asset for your communities here. Um, and it provides an immediate sense of organization and structure as well. Because when you travel places, especially when you have multiple resources that are managed by multiple agencies, it can be kind of overwhelming. You know, we didn't know about this because it was only advertised on the county website. When we missed that resource because we didn't check the state website, we didn't know about this. This is a place where people can kind of stop, especially people coming for the first time. I know you have people that come here regularly and they've got their favorite spots and everything. But for new people coming here, it gives them a sense of, wow, maybe we need to spend an extra night. Every time people spend an extra night, local revenue, you want people to, to spend the night and you want them to spend more than one night. Um, and that's when you really start seeing the revenue benefit. Because then, maybe after the first day of, you know, after two days of this, I'm exhausted. Quiet lunch and antiquing in, in Holly sounds like a really kind of nice calm down, you know, and a change of venue. Um, and people aren't going to know that unless they get a sense of what it is right here and they get a sense that it's very easy to kind of communicate and travel among these resources as well. So think about things uh, like that. I'd also encourage you to think about other things that might be add-ons to what's happening here uh, as well. We've talked about there's kind of the, the resource preset for equestrian. We already have existing camping, ORV is on its way, Renaissance skiing. Um, I'm wondering as well about some of the agricultural lands. Uh, metropolitan areas um, are increasingly seeing the agricultural land turned over to, to pick your own, organic, things like that. Uh, people in the urban areas will be happy to come out and pay really good prices for berries and lettuce and things like that. I do it myself. I drive 40 miles west every weekend uh, to go to the agricultural reserve I mentioned the other night in my opening talk. Um, because I know where it's grown, I know the people that are on the farm, um, and it's, boy, I tell you, the shelf life of lettuce from the supermarket versus the when it's just cut in the farm field, it, it's amazing. Uh, you know, what, what I get at the supermarket usually is on its last day of life, uh, so it's worth it for me to go. Plus, I like driving out into the country to get my stuff. Again, you have a, a green destination here. Um, so. Looking at you know, all the resources here, and again, that can be another family activity for people who are staying here. It can also be another economic development just in terms of having this as a more open area where there's, there's easy access to the metropolitan area and there's access to fresh, fresh produce uh, as well. So uh, you might look at uh, working with some of the agricultural community here and thinking about, is this a viable option? Would they be interested in this? Um, the farms in, in the agricultural reserve in Maryland are through the roof in terms of their profitability when you look at national agricultural statistics. Um, because they're catering to an urban market that's willing to pay for that. And you've got them just, just down the road or up the road in Flint. So you've got a really good destination here. So think about things like that. Um, you're going to need some new additions over time probably for support facilities. Um, I've heard a lot about the needs for ORV, um, but there could also be needs for equestrian if that takes off and just other needs for families here for other resources. So be thinking about some type of commercial I would encourage you to cluster the commercial as much as possible and not try to spread it out too much along the Dixie Highway. Dixie Highway, when you get up here, you know, farther south, there's a lot that's assaulting me all the time. Uh, there's just a lot going on and there's lots of turning movements. And every time you have turning movements, you slow down and reduce the efficiency of the road and you also increase the risk of, of accidents as well. So as much as you can keep this a relatively clean corridor, what you have right now with commercial development on the Dixie Highway, I think is kind of a good, good level. There's you know, the motel, a couple of little spots, and these might be reconsidered and reimagined over time. But I would look at this potential of, of new township lands here and across the road as well. Um, and keeping that tight with the Interstate 75 interchange is a really good place to go. So think about some things like that. Um,
There we go. I'm just going to note that. This is a good spot. Remember, too, when you come in here, there's a really nice little curve to the, this is a really beautiful gateway into this region. Um, what I find interesting about spending some time up here, because I've been getting disoriented period, periodically as well, um, because of all the, the water up here, you don't have the rigid grid <laughs> of this part of the world. Um, coming from the East Coast, I like a little bit of this when I'm traveling, because that's the, the way I'm used to traveling. What I find, because of all the water here and the fact that you don't have the rigid grid of this part of the country because of the topography and, and the water features, um, it makes the area seem additionally special. It's not like every place else um, because there's a very specific road infrastructure here because of your water bodies as well. Um, that also makes it pe people feel like they've gone someplace different, someplace special, someplace uh, closer to nature because it's not a rigid system. It's more of a natural system organizing people's circulation through your districts. So your road network and your road structure is actually quite conducive to reinforcing this whole idea of this is a very special district. So I would think about that um, as well. Uh, so again, that some type of connectivity here, getting back and forth. Be careful about billboards and things like that. Um, if you're talking about being rural, if you're talking about recreation, um, and I see big billboards in the sky, my first expectation driving by is like, um, I don't know if that's really as rural as they're saying it is because there's too much signs uh, in the sky. Um, this is a source of revenue, I completely get that, but there's other things that are sources of revenue too. And I think what we should be doing now is thinking about matching sources of revenue that are reinforcing what your goal is for this district um, and not just randomly saying, well, that's one way to make some money um, because places that go after a quick buck don't tend to do too well in the long term. So be thinking about those types of things. Um, because people keep telling you about, we like this, we value that. Um, but every one of these gradually chips away. And one's not so bad, maybe two's not so bad. What about three, what about four? What about, you know, well, we'll get it, we'll just, maybe we'll just put a CVS right here. You know, think about those. It, it doesn't seem like much at the time, but gradually, I mean, for those of you who have lived here all your lives, I'm sure Springfield Township was much less dense uh, 20 years ago and it didn't happen overnight it kind of was very rural and then gradually one thing changed and then it's like when when did this happen and I hope that 20 years from now you don't go when did that happen I hope you go we were really smart 20 years ago and we still have what we said we wanted to have back then and I think it's a very good place to try to keep yourself um, so um, Dixie Highway is organizing spine here um, I heard a lot too, um, you all are going to have to come up with a, define what you want to call this area. <laughs> I, I know, is it the Dixie Highway, is it the Recreation Corridor, is it the Heritage Corridor, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, those are really, really important things to kind of figure out. But I, I think the Dixie Highway is a really good place to start because the state's already marking it. You don't have to put up any signs. It's already labeled the Dixie Highway. On Interstate 75, there's a big sign that says Dixie Highway, exit here. So if, if you spend no money on tourism investment, people can still find you. Um, and that's really a good place to start. Now, hopefully you can enhance that and, and bring it up a notch or two, but you're already marked by the Dixie Highway. And it also gives you that larger idea of marketing this. As I mentioned the other night, you know, Michigan was marketing the Dixie Highway as a recreation destination back in the 19-teens. Um, You've already got it, you might as, I would say, keep going with it. Um, remember too, the quarter has resources uh, beyond. Uh, after too many dinners at the county cafeteria or lunches, uh, I actually, I had dinner in Clarkston last night with John and uh, wow, you do have good food in Michigan. <laughs> it's not all served in styrofoam and wrapped in plastic, so I'm really, I'm even more excited about the possibilities here now. Resources off the Dixie Highway, like Clarkston, are good opportunities as well. And again, it's very easy to buzz by uh, on the Dixie Highway and miss Clarkston. If I didn't know, go down there, because it's, it's all part of the commercial infrastructure. Um, as an outsider, like how many trips do I want to take down in the hopes of finding something pleasant? Um, um, we had some good conversations the other day, or maybe yesterday, about signage and wayfinding. And this can be really valuable. If you identify this corridor and you can start actually 
as people are driving up, you know, Clarkston Historic Town Center, turn right here. Uh, and then I'm like, oh, maybe I'm gonna take, take a look at that and go wander down. And I'm not gonna be disappointed when I get down there. Um, there's a possibility with places like Holly as well, doing like a Holly loop off of the Dixie Highway, kind of leaving, going through the town and rejoining back with the Dixie Highway later on as well. People like those opportunities. And again, you have the potential for a very diverse group of people coming here, and this can have ripple effects in the economy uh, as you look, look all around. So wayfinding in terms of destinations is very good. Uh, then interpretation as well, so people understand what this is. Uh, the Dixie Highway, uh, in a lot of ways, is a very abstract concept. It's not 1914, it's not an historic house that you can go and visit and understand another time. Um, it was an idea of connecting the American continent and the American population. So by looking at some interpretation along here uh, in key spots, not just in this part, but all through the state at some point, um, telling people the story about the highway and how it changed communities here. Um, you know, the motels, the old motels that are along the Dixie Highway here, that's because this, is, this was the interstate of the period. This was the main road people were traveling. Those motels were there because it was a smart economic investment for them. Um, and that infrastructure, those buildings are a legacy from that period. And those are great historic resources. One of the motels I looked at staying at had really, really bad reviews on TripAdvisor, so I chose not to stay there. Um, but a dirty, smelly room, which I would never stay again, ever, even if you paid me, which is one of the reviews, um, that can all be brought back. You know, the infrastructure is quite good. That's a matter of cleaning and good management. Um, and people will pay to stay in places like that. I'm staying to the Holiday Inn Express right now only because I couldn't stay someplace more interesting. Um, and for people that are traveling for resources like this, they're going to be interested in those places that are more authentic. Um, and uh, that's, you know, Holiday Inn Express, I do that a lot when I travel because that's often my only choice. And uh, it's fine, but, you know, I woke up this morning and I could have been anywhere in the United States. Um, if I wake up in a motel on the Dixie Highway, I'm here and I'm in Michigan, and that's kind of really, really cool. And I will always seek these places out. Look at Route 66, um, and I'll, I'll leave these contacts with, with Brett as well uh, and the staff here. Um, the Route 66 uh, preservation program run by the National Park Service has actually been looking at ways to um, endorse, support, and help finance the restoration and reuse of historic motels along 66, many of which are derelict, even boarded up. Great neon signs, great buildings, because um, people are increasingly interested in staying in places like this uh, as well. The, many of you remember the, the old Thunderbird chain of motels? Um, there's a Thunderbird in Savannah, Georgia. Um, the new owners went in, they ripped out all the improvements that accumulated over the years. Uh, they returned space age formica and radios back in the rooms um, and people are paying a premium now to stay in an old motel and you with millennials changes you know the mid-century history of the united states the auto culture which the dixie highway has these are great resources as well um, and giving me an historic motel to stay in along the way i'll be there in a heartbeat uh, as i think other people will as well so think about resources like that also, um, you have Main Street program in uh, Holly, you've got a Main Street program in Clarkston, and I know John is looking, you know, Dixie Highway is another type of a Main Street. Um, and so applying the successful concepts of the Main Street program to longer corridor is a really viable way of looking at this uh, as a resource as well. So think about those op options and opportunities also. Um, Main Street has a strong focus on historic downtowns and centers. And I would encourage you along this corridor as well to try to reinforce the history because it kind of gets lost. You know, there's McDonald's, there's Big Boy, there's Tim Hortons right next to Dunkin' Donuts, uh, which I still haven't figured out yet. Um, and, uh, you know, sprinkled in that are a few little historic gems from the past, but they're kind of lost in all that commercial development. Um, I would encourage you, my wish list right now, you've got two signature historic sites right up in this area, which are relatively intact within the larger landscape. It's the, it's the old, old mill house or the old, is that what's called, old mill house? Old house inn? Yeah. Old house inn. It's a great Greek revival building. Uh, it's a little shabby right now. Um, it looks a little, 
the architecture is good, its location on the hill is good, and it's very prominent. Um, if you could invest in that, bring that back to a shiny Greek revival, that gives a sense of pre-Dixie Highway. This road is an Indian road, this road is a post road. Um, that house was there because it was an important corridor in the 19th century. And that would really give a sense of this place having a depth of history. The other one I would recommend too is the Red Barn right up here at the corner uh, as well. That's a really great iconic landmark. I think those two alone restored uh, and made prominent in the landscape would just, it would really drive down really quickly. This place has deep roots as well because you don't always get that sense driving me through right now. It's too hard to see. But these are well set in the landscape. Um, they're related to the road and they could be really great resources. So I'd encourage you to think about things like that uh, as well. Good planning involves a big picture and a long range goal, but also an attention to details as well. So I encourage you to be thinking at, at two levels uh, as much as you can as well. Um, I was uh, chewing Sean's ear off yesterday as we were driving down by the, the, the state parklands. Um, there's a lot of chevrons that are popping up. You know, I do a lot of work with highway safety and transportation policy. You have way more chevrons than you need. Um, it's visual clutter. Uh, you're also using pole, pole, back to back. You, you have more poles than you need. Um, all this stuff chips away at the idea of being in a rural area. So. Start working with the local um, county transportation office and work with, with MDOT as well um, and look at ways in which transportation infrastructure can be a little bit softer. Um, I'm not saying less safe. My whole job is safe. And I would argue with you based on federal guidance for science, the Chevrons are actually making these roads less safe because people start disregarding science if there's too much of it. Um, and these are good things to start thinking about and there's federal policy to back that up. But, this is a thing where communities are here, resources are all good, but don't forget to work with utilities, transportation agencies as well, because they have an impact on people's experiences uh, as well, and it's very important to get everyone on, on board. A number of states, particularly on the National Road uh, in Maryland uh, and Pennsylvania, the state transportation agencies have developed special policies for these historic corridors, whereby they're a little bit more thoughtful in terms of what they do, um, they try to be a bit lighter in terms of their impact, in terms of highway uh, use. It's very likely if the ORV park takes off, if this area increases, you're probably going to need some additional turn lanes here. Um, I can see a point eventually where the bridge over Interstate 75 is going to need to be widened as well. Um, you want to be part of that conversation. Um, and you want to be sure that those changes for safety and access and efficiency are being done in a way which reflects the character of this region and doesn't make it look like the next step out of Detroit. Um, so be sure you try to have that balance uh, as well. I think one of the great opportunities you have right now is with the county's bicentennial coming up. This is the perfect time to look at investment in your communities uh, and this is a really great ready-made project that can have some fairly instant pop uh, with some additional resources. So you know, I would work that angle as well. It's part of our heritage. Uh, we're investing in the future for the next 200 years, and 200 years from now, we still want to be a desirable green destination within this region. And that's not a bad way to be thinking about this and presenting your ideas going forward. Um, again, along with those things too, these types of development, think about setbacks, think about the architecture design, uh, think about planting. Um, these are very, very critical. The new um, distribution center farther up uh, in Holly Township, they've kind of just clear cut the whole side. Um, you know, I understand businesses need visibility, but a distribution center really doesn't need to be that visible. Um, and they've taken out a really nice natural buffer. And I learned yesterday they're planning on putting in kind of some moundy berms and they're going to plant them. Well, moundy berms are what you do down in front of Walmart. Um, they're not what you do in a rural district. Um, think about having some type of a tree preservation ordinance, uh, which many communities have, whereby if you approve development like that, an orange fence goes up around those trees and those are not to be not to be taken down if that was part of the agreement, which I understand it was originally. Um, putting some Mounty berms in and planting some decorative trees on it is gonna make this area look much more suburban. And I think it's more suburban than what I'm hearing from people in terms of what you would like. Um, again, these are simple measures. Uh, if a business finds this a good location, um, people will always balk at first, we don't want that, it's blah, blah, blah. I promise you, if you stick to your guns and you're reasonable, 
they'll work with you. Uh, and that's when you should, you should be proud of your community. And if you maintain this consistently, um, it's a very strong message going forward. This is what we expect of everybody. This is how we do things here. Also too, I caution you, it's nice to look at the, the rustic architecture and the ideas of the environment, but also don't tip the line and get too cute. Um, if you have a, a big mobile station with, with big rustic stone, it might end up almost looking ridiculous at some point. Um, so sometimes just simple and clean and tight is good with new infrastructure as well. Um, you know, gas stations in particular, uh, if you can avoid some of the lighting and the excessive decoration of the canopies, simple canopy, simple roof, um, the gas station just kind of disappears. Simple mound with simple native plantings or grasses. You know, it's there, people can find it, but it's not looking too, too ornamental or too decorative. Part of the problem with, with commercial strips now is there's almost so much decorative planting and grasses and flowers going on, it's almost more clutter in one way. Attractive clutter, but it's more clutter. What you have here is a nice, clean, green edge that gives you a really nice sense of region. Um, same with the ORV park. I think it'd be really nice to have this nicely buffered. Um, people are going to go there, even if they can't see it from the side of the road. It's going to be a known entity. Um, and having this green line here will heal the scar of the gravel extraction um, and allow everyone to be happy as they can possibly be back in here. Another thing, too, over time is safety crossings here uh, as well. Um, for people in the campground to be able to come over here, um, it's, it's going to happen. So you're going to want to be thinking about that over time. Do you need an underpass or overpass at some point? Underpass will be better because it's, it's, it's more invisible and it makes it seem more rural. If you do an underpass, you want to make sure that it actually feels safe and is well organized so it doesn't seem like kind of a creepy place and people cross the street anyway. In the interim, just stay a step ahead of safety, okay? So what you could do initially is you might have some rumble strips approaching this area just to give people a sense that there's something coming up and an increased pedestrian activity um, as kind of a first start out of the gate. Um, you can install just signals right now that allow pedestrians to press a light and get a red light so they can cross safely. Um, and you can kind of keep moving up there to eventually doing some type of more permanent crossing facility. But again, this can evolve as you said. You know, a lot of this we just don't know yet. How many people are gonna come here? We just don't know. Um, are people here gonna wanna go over here? Or maybe they just like could care less. Some of the stuff you just can't plan and measure and scientifically guess in advance. So the thing is to just be thinking ahead and be thinking very comprehensively about people's desires and opportunities, what ramifications that has on the aesthetics, safety and infrastructure and all that. So be very, very cognizant of that. And again, um, intersections. And I was talking to uh, Jessica from DNR yesterday. She said some of the buffer areas they use around ORV parks actually can serve as habitat as well. And I don't think you would tend to think of habitat next to ORV, um, but it's all this thinking outside of the box. So again, these ideas for these connections and, and cross intersections here, I think, are what your real great assets are. So in summary, <laughs> um, I arrive at Oakland County, I drive up the Dixie Highway, commercial strips, suddenly I start seeing signs that I'm on the Dixie Highway, and like, oh, Clarkson Village, maybe I'm going to swing by there. I come up a little bit farther north, and I cross Dixie Lake, and I'm like, wow, there's water, and this is beautiful, and my expectation starts going up. And I go a little further, and it's a great Greek Revival house up on the ridge that's like, wow, this was a really important place because this is high style architecture. There's a rich history here. I drive a little bit further and I pull off on the side of the road and I have a beautiful view of the lake looking into the park. And there's a panel there that tells me why this place is here. And just up ahead, camping, ORV, Renaissance, skiing. And if you just go a little bit further, um, this initial introduction will be fully met for you at the new visitor center. <laughs> where you can get information on all these different agencies and the resources that you have up here. Learn about the Dixie Highway, find out the hours that you can go skiing, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and then I get settled in. Um, and I decide what I'm gonna do, where I'm gonna camp, or if I'm gonna stay at an old motel, um, if I'm gonna go in teaking, have dinner, ORV, horseback riding, or picking berries. I'm gonna be overwhelmed in a very, very pleasant way. Um, and as I travel through here, the resources and services I'm gonna need are gonna be there and be obvious but not screaming at me. I'll be able to find gas if I need it. I'll be able to find 
a repair shop if I need it, but it's not gonna be some big look at me. It's gonna be, I'm another resource that serves you within this very nice and pleasant landscape. Um, and most importantly, if we can pull this all off, as I am at the visitor center here and looking at the barn across the street, um, I'm gonna have a good experience, right? And I'm probably gonna realize I should have spent a bit more time than I actually planned initially. And what am I gonna do? I'm gonna come back again. And I'm gonna plan a longer stay. And more importantly, I'm gonna tell friends and family like, you gotta go here. You gotta go to Northern Oakland County and you gotta hang out and spend some time there. And maybe I wanna come back in the autumn and see the leaves. Maybe I'm more interested in what's like up here in the winter. And you can start expanding those seasons as well in terms of visitation. Um, and you can do all this, and you can really bring in revenue to your communities. You can do a lot to protect the integrity uh, and the quality of life that you have here in a way that, that you're doing based on your needs. And like I said the other day, too, um, be sure as well as you're looking at people coming into using these, these public lands, if you have a favorite place to hunt, you have a fav favorite place to fish, maybe not all of these are marketed to everybody. You might want to set aside a couple places just for quiet quiet local use and there are little secrets that are little secret gems that are spotted around here as well so you still feel like it's still your backyard in your community so that's my overview um, which I have no idea how long I've been overviewing that's not too bad at all one hour uh, maybe you've been bored for one hour but I thought it was pretty efficient um, so um, questions thoughts observations you want me to get on the plane right now John Keep all the moving parts and entities. It would be very good to look at some, I, I think, some type of a Dixie Highway Association here, which would have representation from local communities, local government, county government, state government, and interested uh, business owners and property owners in the region to kind of be talking through all the details. These things all sound very possible, uh, but how they get implemented always involves a lot of work, and there's eventually conflict points uh, as well. So having a working group that can come together regularly and figure these things out uh, is really good. You know, um, and part of that too, I've been really impressed. Um, I said this the other day and I'll say it again sincerely. Uh, you have really, really good resources here in terms of your government services. I've been really impressed with the municipal, county, and state representatives I've met while I've been here. These are people that really kind of get these bigger pictures and see the intersections. So take advantage. Um, of Main Street, take advantage of historic resources, natural resources, county parks, uh, state parks, DNR. Uh, we had the woman from DNR who does motorized trails with us all day yesterday. She came for the meeting, she stayed all day because she thought it was important. Um, that's a real investment in the possibility and potentials here. And everyone brings different perspectives to this conversation, and these are good to have. I never, ever would have thought that an RV park could have a viable habitat belt around it, and I know that now. So these are good things to be thinking about. So think about these management structures, and then a structure to kind of organize this and establish a vision. What you might want to look at doing down the road, which many historic quarters do, is to develop what's called a quarter management plan. A quarter management plan is a visionary document. It's not a policy document. Uh, but it basically lays out expectations for, we value this quality of life, we value this aesthetic, we value this landscape. Um, we would like to see this happen. We'd like to see it happen in a certain way. Um, and it's a good document to kind of capture these ideas, um, and then you can use it to kind of get buy-in and get people aware of what you're thinking about. It's a good way to introduce new businesses to the area as well as to the goals and expectations here. Question? Yes. Uh, thank you for a wonderful presentation. And thank, uh, Open, thank you, Open Commons, for bringing uh, DNA. I'm picking up on John's comment on the uh, structure the organization, do you have legal entity wise, which should be a 501c3, do you have any sense of what would be the best way for the future when you're looking at opportunities for funding, how would we develop that overall management? Well, I typically advise with the quarter management plan process, uh, this is probably the answer you don't want, um, let it evolve and figure it out. Um, I've worked in some states where having the 501c3 has been really important to getting them ability for state funds. I've been in other states where they found that um, they have enough of a strong relationship with, with state and local government that 
just by the fact that they, they're recognized uh, as a group and they meet regularly, that that's sufficient for them to make requests. And uh, because in many instances, the money's really not going to that organization, it's the organization anyway, it's really going to resources that already have existing managements like DNR or, or county parks. And you know, it's just kind of part of the conversation to facilitate that and organize it. So I would say, again, I don't know the local laws and policies of, of doing business in Michigan and in, in the county here. Um, I would, it, to me, it's all, if, the simpler you can keep it, it's always the better. Uh, and these types of structures, I think, can work very well as advisory groups. Um, I've seen some that have gone on and get incorporated. Uh, the Ohio River Route um, in Indiana and the National Route in Indiana both have formal structures in place now. Um, and they're well established and they have boards and they actually raise money and they provide grants. I mean, they've become quite sophisticated uh, in terms of their abilities over time. Route 66 is really uneven by state um, in terms of being organized and, and uh, not organized. And uh, it really depends on the state where it is as well. So um, I would start out with the idea of some kind of, begin with an ad hoc group. And you know, if you have the right representatives there, someone's gonna say, if someone's bound to know if the county or state or whatever, you know, if we don't do this, we won't be able to get that. I mean, the main thing is you wanna be able to argue collectively for this region and this corridor uh, and, and combine, you know, if, if one count township goes and asks for something, it's different than if, you know, a cluster township goes and say, we're all on board, we've discussed this collectively, we need you to invest in this. Um, that's why I think the, uh, the resource center here is a real, real possibility as well in terms of its, its, its logic and its location. If everyone's kind of on board uh, with this, I mean, that's, you know, people pay attention to things like that. That's how it all works. So that's my recommendation is to figure it out. <laughs> that sounded a little bit, all right. <laughs> Thanks, see ya. Uh, <laughs> yep. Dan, uh, you gave a, a, a great perspective on coming north, but what are your thoughts coming south from the Flint metro region? Because That's a, a perception of just north of us that everything south of a certain point is Detroit metro area, um, but the reality in this part of the region is that it's not. So I wonder if you could give some perspective on Maybe I'm really glad you brought that up. I need another 45 hours, I think. <laughs> um, uh, it's very important. People do come travel two directions. It's really good to figure out. There just wasn't this time this trip. I'm not, I'm, I would imagine there's some type of moment traveling south from Flint where you get the same sense of the landscape changing, being in a more wooded, more open area. Um, and that's a really, really excellent point. What is, what is that point when you feel like you're entering this, this district? coming from north and heading south. Uh, extraordinarily important. I, I don't know what to tell you. I mean, I'm sure it's out there. Um, invite me back, we'll figure it out. Um, but yeah, it's always good to think about things uh, both directions. Um, it's actually good for me. It's, everyone's been very nice driving me around the past, past few hours. Um, I drove up here by myself today, uh, and I had a whole different experience of the corridor and the highway from being behind the, the steering wheel and experiencing it. So. Uh, it kind of gave me a look at this with fresh eyes. And I typically do always drive quarters both directions because there's things and resources that are often one dimensional in terms of which way you're going. So excellent point. Uh, this can be your first task as an organizing group to figure out what, what the experience is coming in, coming in from the north and how people are, are arriving this way. It seems like the corner right here, this intersection is really the kind of, this is the critical node and this is a critical node here at 75. So they're coming this way or this way, there should be a sense of kind of arrival and center right here, which is why it's great to have this resource here, the barn, camping, ORV, it's kind of all concentrated very heavily there. But as you're approaching it this way, it's an excellent point. Yeah, Brett. Yeah, I'm hearing, um, I, mean, I know this is all speculative, I'm hearing about maybe like a, a great wolf kind of lodge type of thing. Is that like one of the thoughts that's being had for that property? Um, which I think with a resource like this could be a, a very good, good addition. Um, I think this is the type of thing uh, which I've been saying all along is, you know, the concept is good, how it's implemented can be a huge asset or a giant disaster. And that I think is the case with a little bit of thoughtful planning and consideration could be really good. What I would think ideally, and I don't know all the nuances of the property in the area, but if you could preserve. Hey, hey Dan, yeah. there's the big map. Oh, the big one there, yeah. I can do that. And I can have some coffee. Um.
Okay, so we're right, right here, correct? Yes. And the barn is right here? Right. And the property goes, what, up to here? Or how far? All this? Okay. So this, the bulk of the property is up here. That's a pretty good chunk of land. Um, to me, in an ideal world, in terms of the idea of this being a rural community, if this could be kind of meadow, low density, open land up here, framing the barn, um, a little bit of screening back behind the barn, and you could have a fairly significant complex up here behind that. Um, again, uh, the Great Wolf concept, this type of thing, again, it's an adventure for people. It's not the Holiday Inn Express. So if it's set in a larger contextual landscape, it's all the better in terms of marketing that as a facility. If it's right up against the highway, it's going to look like any other place with just log architecture. Um, so that would reinforce this intersection here really tight. You know, you've got this, this is kind of a critical bow tie right here, if you think about it, uh, at this very important spot right here. If this could become a resource center, this could become a glimpse of agriculture with this great barn up here. I mean, think about the marketing for this facility. Drive up or down the Dixie Highway. Um, how do you find us? The big red barn. We're right at the big red barn. You, know, you can't do any better than that in terms of information wayfinding. Um, you don't need a sign. You don't need a, a street number. You know, go along the Dixie Highway when you see the big red barn, pull in the parking lot, that's where we are. You're going to have a fabulous time. And the RV is right right behind us. Um, so again, um, sometimes sitting aside a little bit of land uh, can reinforce. I mean, think about if you've gone to any kind of a, a golf resort or some type of a spa or something like that. You know, these are usually kind of set back in a, in a, in a, a natural landscape because uh, people are going for those types of retreats or resources are looking for that sort of getaway. And I think that this type of facility, again, is that. You know, again, the campgrounds are nestled back in uh, with water and all that. There's a sense of being there. And I think this is an opportunity here uh, as well. Other thoughts, questions? Does this seem possible? Does it sound like a type of place you'd like to live over time? So thank everybody for uh, being so generous with your time these last few days. Uh, I'm not a morning person, so I appreciate the fact that people were here at 9 o'clock. Uh, you should be impressed that I was here at 9 o'clock. Uh, uh, but uh, it's, it's been a very good experience. I hope I can come back and, and work with you in the future with this. But I know you have a lot to think about. Um, and this will all take a little bit of work and effort and, and conversation. But um, I work all over the country. And I, I, I seldom see this concentration of resources, this level of interest in the community to do the right thing. Um, and working within a, in a large infrastructure where there's, there's resources uh, in terms of, of, of capable, talented uh, people at state and local government that can actually help make this all come together. And local governments that see this as an opportunity, um, that's all nice. Lots of places are still like, give us a Walmart and we'll be happy. I see people here that see a much more nuanced approach to what their community can be and how it can be viable over time. So thank you very much for having me out here.